Good evening, family. Hey, it's your brother, Gerald T. Hightower, coming in. Yes, finally. I know I'm late, y'all, but I'm here nevertheless. Welcome to the Late Night Love Chat. And uh, we came in tonight, family, to get into some rich dialogue in here tonight. Last night's conversation was awesome. Those of you that are watching by way of replay, you want to go back and check out last night's broadcast. If you're watching on YouTube or by way of replay, go ahead and check out the broadcast from uh, yesterday. I believe that was the 12th, uh, Wednesday, the 12th of May. Uh, you want to check that broadcast out. But listen, um, or maybe it was the 13th, I'm not sure. All these days get to running together on you, you know. <laughs> but listen, we came in tonight, family, to chop it up and have some awesome dialogue in here tonight, family, because tonight we're going to talk about real love readiness. Yes, a lot of people are out here up in these social media streets and they say they're ready for a relationship. They say they're ready for marriage. All of the ladies all over the world are literally asking me, Dr. G, where are the good men at? Where are the men who are ready for marriage? And guess what, ladies? Men are asking the same question because while women outnumber men, just in the natural, of course, naturally there are more women who are ready for marriage or at least declaring that they're ready for marriage than there are men. But we got to chop it up in here tonight and talk about what does, uh, what constitutes, what, what, what constitutes a person who's really marriage ready? What does marriage readiness look like? What does relationship readiness look like? Listen, you all come in and hit the share button right there. Hit that share button right here and let's get some folks in here tonight because we got to chop it up, y'all. We're going to get into some real, real dialogue and find out what real love readiness looks like. Hey, I see you. Amy is in the building. Blessings on you, Amy. Dr. Clara, thank you so much, dear. I appreciate you greatly, and thank you for sharing. Miss Dorothy, blessings on you. Leslie Dove is in the building. What's up? Miss Dorothy, I see you. Thank you all for coming in. I appreciate you. Yes, Dr. Clara, that's the question we're asking tonight. What does marriage readiness look like? Because here's the really here's the reality, family, especially those of us who are in leadership and ministry, those of you who are CEOs of your own firm, your own business, those of you who are already climbing the corporate ladder, or perhaps you have are are in pursuit of academic goals, whatever those things are. Many of us are um, in the place. Um, what other platform am I on? I'm on uh, YouTube. I'm not on. Um, I'm not on Clubhouse tonight, Amy. Um, I had a, a counseling session that ran a little longer, and so I just didn't feel like getting in and trying to set up Clubhouse and trying to, you know, yeah, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot just to be here. So where I am, Amy, family, I am on StreamYard and the platform of StreamYard is a wonderful platform. It doesn't cost that much. It's just a little bit of money it costs you per month, which will allow you, there's a free uh, a free part of StreamYard, but if you want to broadcast simultaneously on multiple platforms, StreamYard is, in my estimation, the best. Um, because right now, I'm on two pages on Facebook. I'm on my personal page and I'm on my Real Love Nation page. And I'm at, at simultaneously, I am on YouTube. All right. And so, by the way, let me introduce myself for those who, who do not know me at all. Uh, again, my name is Gerald T. Hightower, affectionately known as Dr. G. And I am the CEO of Real Love Nation. Real Love Nation is a relationship development premarital consulting and divorce recovery firm. I bring you 18 years. Yes. You see all this gray? Yes. That's from counseling folks. <laughs> but as a pastoral consultant, I bring you 18 years of experience. So as I always say, I'm not new to this. I'm real true to this. I'm not just another social media talking head. I'm not someone who sprung up out of the COVID crisis and say, Hey, I'm a relationship expert. Uh, in fact, I decided to get rid of that, uh, of that title that people all over the country call me and uh, have featured me on radio, uh, television, and in conferences all over the country. People have said, oh, wow, Dr. G is an expert. And I am an expert uh, by pure definition. An expert is simply one who gets paid 
for a certain profession. So if you are a mechanic, you are a professional, you are an expert mechanic. Um, if you are an educator, you are an expert in your particular field, at least I hope you are if you're teaching our children. Uh, uh, whatever it is that you do, if you get paid for what you do, that qualifies you as an expert, all right? All right, otherwise you're a volunteer. You are a, uh, 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 you are a, a mentee. Um, you're in training and you're learning how to become ex an expert so that you can be compensated fairly for what you do. All right. Blessings on you. Sherry D, long time no see. Good to see you. Miss Veronica, thanks for coming in. Prophetess Wanda, blessings on you. Carlinda, good to see you. Blessings on you. Samandria, good to see you. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you all for sharing. I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes because our numbers are kind of low. So I'm going to leave you all to share and get some folks in on the broadcast because we got some rich information that we're going to share tonight. Hey, bless you, Miss Joy. we got some rich information that we're going to share tonight. So I need you all to help me get the numbers up. And I'm just going to take a sip on my juice without the gin while y'all help some folks come in. <laughs> mm -hmm. For my wonderful love mug. Thank you for sharing, Veronica. I know you do. Michelle, blessings on you. Chanel, blessings on you. Thank you for coming in, fam. I appreciate you. Mm hmm. So listen, uh, let's chop it up um, and and talk about um, <laughs> Miss Arlene must be from the hood where it's all good. She coming. What up, Bishop? <laughs> Bless you, Miss Arlene. Thank you for coming in, dear. Blessings on you. Listen. Um, so let's chop it up, fam, because, again, um, I am I do understand and it is a fact that women outnumber men and certainly uh by that um, standard, uh, of course, if women outnumber men on the planet, then quite naturally, there are going to be more women who are re marriage ready or think they're ready for relationships. There are going to be far more women who are ready than there are men. But I want to encourage you tonight. Blessings on you, Galan. Listen. Um, okay, be careful driving, be safe, traveling grace in Jesus' name. Listen, so ladies, I want to help you because by default, if women are outnumbering men, then that may make it may make you feel like, well, there's a scarcity of good men. Bless you, Dia. Good to see you. Listen, so I want to encourage you, ladies, first and foremost, I want to give you this. Somebody drop this in the chat. God ain't broke. God ain't broke. I don't say ain't because I don't know how to speak properly. I say ain't for emphasis. Listen. God has never run out of anything and he's never run out of good men. And let me address the elephant in the room. God has not run out of good, godly black men. And just because you haven't run into any doesn't mean that there aren't any. Hello, many of you, you live in a very infinite, you live in an infinitesimally small box. Your world is so ridiculously small that it has, it's been almost impossible for even God to help you. Because your whole life consists of work, church, and home, work, church, and home, work, church, take the kids here, take the kids to school, take the kids to a soccer game or a recital or a movie, and then back home. That has been your life pre-COVID-19 and certainly since uh, since COVID-19 began. And so as a result, you're not any place to be found by a good man. You don't go any place. You don't associate in circles where good godly men are. You don't hang out in any place where high quality, high value men are other than the church. And so as a result, you are minimizing your own opportunity as a woman to be found. Because I know, a, I know plenty of women that are constantly turning men down for dates. Good men. I'm talking about high value brothers. I'm talking about men that's been on a job 10, 20 years, making good money, got a fat 401k plan, men who own their own homes, or at the very least, men who are well established financially, who are whole emotionally and are saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for a good opportunity too. So I want to encourage you, bless you, Yolanda. I want to encourage you that there are no shortages. Michael Crawford, bless you, sir. There are no there are no shortages in the kingdom of God. There's only a shortage of opportunities that you make yourself available for. All right. Because God's kingdom ain't broke. All right. I don't know what kind of God y'all serving, but the God I serve, he ain't broke. All right. So let's get in here tonight. All right. 
Uh, let's get it. Apostle Larry, bless you, man. So I'm going to open up with a quick word of prayer and then we're going to jump into it. I need you all to hit the share button right there. Let's get some folks in on the broadcast, y'all, because uh, I need you all to help me spread the word. Let's encourage some folks because there's a lot of people who think they're relationship ready. And so tonight I'm going to chop it up with you. We're going to talk about five ways to prepare your heart to love again, because the truth of the matter is, and I bring you again, 18 years of experience in this field of relationships. Listen, there are a lot of people who could be and should be married, but many of us, and I'm talking about men and women, many of us have shut our hearts down. We have put ourselves in a Superman-like fortress of solitude. <laughs> Y'all seen the movie Superman, where Superman, his house, Superman's crib was like way in the North Pole just built with nothing but ice and icebergs and glaciers. <laughs> the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, listen, and you couldn't even hang out at Superman's crib because you're going to be in sub-zero temperatures if you're hanging out at Superman's crib. I don't know how he took Lois out there, but listen, you will freeze to death hanging out with Superman. <laughs> but this is how many of us have formulated our own lives. We've structured our lives where we are basically, we have these fortresses of solitude. And we say we want love, but tonight we're going to talk about how to really prepare your heart to love again. Y'all ready? If y'all ready, throw up an eight real quick and say, yeah, I'm ready for this new, new, Dr. G, because this old stuff, this single life is for the birds. I don't know about y'all, but listen, I've had some fun and I've had some success as a single person. But man, this single life is done, son. I'm done with the single life. Miss Rochelle, Laronia, I am done with the single life. Y'all can have it. But as for the G in my house, I'm putting up the deuces sideways to the single life. Somebody else can have this. I'm done, son. <laughs> Julene, good to see you. Sherry D, are you ready? Come on, I'm ready. I'm done. I'm done with this. Somebody else can have this life. Mm -mm. I'm ready for my wife. I am ready for my wife. Wifey, you hear me? Do you hear me, hunty, hunty? I'm coming for you. <laughs> I ain't gonna be singing the Shy Light song, Dr. Clara, Miss Chanel. I ain't gonna keep singing this Shy Light song out here. Talking about, have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? Come on, Apostle Larry. I ain't gonna be out here talking about, you know, I, I, I just can't find her. Oh my God, I, have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? Oh, I see her face everywhere I go on the streets. And even at the picture show, have you seen her? <laughs> no, that is not going to be my testimony. I am done, son, with this single life. <laughs> y'all can have it. All right. Have y'all hit the share button? Have y'all shared with some people? Drop some names in the comment section, y'all. And let's get some folks in on this broadcast. We got to help some people in here tonight. All right. Miss Tanya, bless you. All right. Are y'all ready? Let's get it. Let's get it. These numbers are real low, y'all. Y'all got to help me share now because I'm dropping some love nuggets. I'm giving y'all some pay 99 information. People have to pay and go to a workshop to get the kind of love nuggets I'm giving y'all for the free 99 tonight. All right. Thank you, Diana. Bless you, dear. All right. So, uh, Let's pray, and we're going to jump into the broadcast. So, Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you tonight, sir. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you in because, God, you are love, according to your word in 1 John chapter 4. God is love. And so, Father, we welcome you in tonight, and we ask that you would permeate this broadcast with your spirit, which is love and peace. And thank you, God, for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may have solutions how to build and maintain healthy love relationships. And God, thank you for teaching us tonight. Thank you, Father, as your servant, I make myself available to you. Holy Spirit, you pour your wisdom in because you are the teacher. I am nothing but a vessel. So thank you, Father, for teaching us tonight how to prepare our hearts to love again. We love you, we bless you, and we give you glory tonight, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you all for coming in. I appreciate you. Listen, so for all the single people, all the single people, all the single people, all the single people, I'll get your hands up. 
Listen, tonight, family, I want to introduce my dear sister, Prophetess Diana DiStefano. Listen, Friday, August 27th, Saturday, August 28th, we are having a singles gathering, y'all. It's called Know Your Worth Singles Conference, and oh my God, it's going to be all the way live. You can bet your last money. This conference is going to be all the way live, hunty, hunty. Listen, I need you all to hurry up and get there. New Bern, North Carolina. Listen, y'all ain't doing nothing because half of y'all been on, most of y'all, all of y'all been on punishment. We all been on punishment. We all been on quarantine mode, right? So I need y'all to get there. Apostle Larry, I want to see you, man of God, because it's time for you to get a wife. Hamburger, Apostle Larry. Listen, you got to hurry up and get you a wife. Praise God. You in the same boat as me. Let's go. I want to see y'all get there. Listen, uh, uh, Diana is going to uh, put the information up in just a second, and I'm going to click on it so that you all can see the information. I want you to register tonight. All right. Listen, let me tell you a few things that's going down at the Know Your Worth Singles Conference. First, the first night is Friday night, and that's going to be just a nighttime gathering. We're going to have a talk show live. It's going to be lit. And Diana and myself and a couple of other phenomenal guests that are going to be with us, uh, we're going to have literally like a late night love chat forum where we're going to be getting into some deep dialogue, including talking about sexual compatibility. Yes, that's right. We're talking about sex. And I'm going to have some professional certified sex experts that are going to be talking on the subject because some of y'all think that, you know, there's no way we can figure it out and if we're going to be abstaining until marriage and how are we going to figure it out? How are we going to know if it's going to be good or not? Listen, there are ways to do it and it's called communication, communication. How do you learn to commune? You learn through communication. All right. So here's the information right here, family. I need you to go right now, go right now and register for the Know Your Work Singles Conference. All right. Listen, because the price of the conference is going to go up in a little little bit, family. All right. We, Diana has been doing a great job with letting people know, but the price is going to go up, hunty, hunty, in just a minute. So y'all go ahead and hurry up and get the early bird special. Okay. Now, Saturday is all day for the conference. And in addition to the things that we're going to have Friday night, which includes speed dating, in, including speed dating, we're going to be also doing speed dating on Saturday and included for the price of the registration is lunch on Saturday, okay? Lunch is included on Saturday. We're going to be all day, family. We got some fun activities. We're going to have music. It's going to be off the chain, all right? You don't want to miss it. I'm coming live, y'all. This ain't no virtual conference. I'm coming all the way to New Bern, North Carolina, and we are going to be hosting this event live. So all y'all who said, Dr. G, I'm ready. I'm, oh, my God, I'm looking for my husband. I'm waiting for my husband to find me because I'm tired of being single. Listen, boo, get your wonderful, anointed, beautiful, sanctified self up and get on. First of all, go ahead and register for the conference tonight, number one. Number two, make sure you come to the conference. Don't just register. Come, all right? Listen, you can get flights right now. Listen, you can get flights cheaper than you can buy gas right now. Praise God. Gas prices have gone up. Flights have not, not yet. So hurry up, get your flights Hotel information. Diana will give you hotel information. There's a wonderful group of hotels that are right near the conference center. Amy, I want to see you there. Amy, hurry up and get your wonderful self there. Samandria, you know you got to hurry up and come. Come on, let's go. I want to see y'all at this conference. Don't y'all be telling me that you want to get married, but you're not coming to the conference. And yes, to all of the ladies who say, oh my God, Dr. G, are the men going to be there? Yes, men are going to be there. Typically, ladies, you got to understand, because we're still about 90 days or more out. Men don't register for stuff until the last minute. It's just the way men are, all right? I don't know why that is, but it just is. Listen, I'm talking about even for Bishop T.D. Jakes' Pastors and Leaders Conference every year, with the exception of a small group of men, usually men are signing up within 30 days, 20 days out. That's how men do. So don't worry about the men, ladies, because I told you God ain't broke. Men are going to be coming. The question is, are you coming, hunty, hunty? Are you going to be there? That's the question for tonight. All right. <laughs> 
So I'm going to be there. I'm going to have books. I'm going to personally autograph books. If you buy one, I'm going to personally autograph your book for you. And it's going to be phenomenal, y'all. So don't miss it. It's the Know Your Word Singles Conference going down Friday, August 27th and Saturday, August 28th in New Bern, North Carolina. All right. Uh, Miss Arlene. Miss Arlene said, I already registered. Come on. I know that's right. Come on, Miss Arlene. Come through. Miss Arlene said, I registered and got my plane ticket purchased already. See that, Diana? This is what I'm talking about. Come on through, Miss Arlene. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, y'all. All right, let's get it. So I'm talking about five ways to prepare your heart to love again. Now, the first thing that we want to talk about tonight, family of God, love nugget number one. Somebody write this down in the comment section. If you're going to prepare yourself to love again, the first thing you got to do is be healed of soul wounds. Somebody drop this in the chat real quick, Samandria. Be healed of soul wounds. Be healed of soul wounds. What does that mean, Dr. G? Hamburger, I ain't never heard of that before. I've never heard of what is a soul wound. A soul wound, family, is a wound that takes place on the inside. Now, this is different. Many of you have heard and are familiar with the term soul tie, all right? But Amy, the soul wound is different from the soul tie because Dr. Clara, the soul wound is something that we have encountered that has left us injured in your mind, your will that, or, or excuse me, that, that left, that's left you injured on the inside. And it has caused you to suffer a hurt in your emotions. All right. So the soul wound is based on an experience, a situation that you've come through. A soul tie is based on something with someone, all right? So the soul wound is based on an occurrence. The soul tie is based on a person, all right? There's a significant difference there. So now what you have to understand then, and let me talk to my men first, because a lot of men are suffering from soul wounds and they are trying to act macho like they're not hurting, like they're not bleeding on the inside. A lot of men are suffering from internal bleeding. And I don't mean physical internal bleeding. I'm talking about emotional internal bleeding. And that's why you keep hurting all these women. Hurting people hurt people. And so you keep going in and out of a relationship, bro. You just like the Ohio players talking about roller coaster. Yo, love. Say what? You're like a roller coaster. You in and out one of the in one relationship, out of another relationship. In one relationship, out of another relationship. In and out, in and out. Hamburger, over the last two years, you've been with 12 different women and then slept with over half of them. And you're wondering why you're depressed? Because you have been constantly dealing with a soul wound and then you don't hurt so many other women because you are hurting yourself and you have not taken the time to sit your wonderful self down somewhere and get some coaching, get some counseling. And as a result of the bleeding that you're doing, you're bleeding on other people. How in the world do you ever think that God is going to trust you with a good woman? God ain't about to send you a precious, awesome woman who got her stuff together, who's sound in her heart and her mind and is ready to be a wife. God ain't about to let you get connected to that woman only for you to hurt her and jack her up just like you done jacked up the last few sisters in your life because your life wasn't ready. Your heart wasn't ready. Your mind wasn't ready. You haven't been healed of the last situation you went through. You were betrayed. You went through a divorce and you never sat your yourself down and got some coaching. And as a result, you are bleeding. Yeah, you're doing good with your preaching, your teaching, making that cheddar, making life better. But listen, money cannot buy healing, bruh, bruh. Let me help you. Money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy healing. Money cannot buy wholeness. All right. You got to sit down, sit down, sit down somewhere. Let me help you in here tonight. I know brother said, man, Dr. G, you're being tough on us. Got to be tough on you because I'm, I'm t God is tough on me and I'm being tough on me. All right. Listen, I shared with you just transparently the other night. Listen, God has been dealing with me in this season about being under construction. What does that mean? That I'm allowing God to strip me because I got some issues that I need to be healed from so that I can be properly prepared to be a good husband. Because I done been through a painful divorce. And this is my last giddy up. I ain't doing this no more. This one right here. This one right here. This is the last time I'm getting married. I'm getting married and I'm going to stay married forever. 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 Ever. Forever. 
Listen, the only way this woman going to leave me is by death do us part. That means that she kicks the bucket or I kick the bucket. <laughs> Listen, this is the last time. This is my last giddy up, Apostle Larry. This is my last giddy up. <laughs> when I marry this woman, that's it. That's it. Boo, we about to be here. And listen, we ain't going through no separation. I don't care if you get mad at me. You ain't sleeping in the other room and I ain't sleeping on the couch. We're going to sleep in this same bed together. We're going to sleep in this same room together. Honey, you have to get your little life together. If you got an attitude, that's all right, sugar, sugar. We're going to hug each other and kiss each other before we say good night. Why? Because the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And listen, if you are a godly woman, if you're a godly man, y'all should be able to hug and kiss and say good night before you turn over and go to bed. And y'all stop playing these games, y'all married folks. I'm talking to my married people because I am blessed to have some good married folks that follow me. Y'all stop playing these games, acting like you tired. You done laid your tail on the couch all the way till two o'clock in the morning. You ain't watching nothing on TV. That's just a raggedy excuse so you can fall asleep on the couch because you don't want to go get in the bed with your spouse. The devil is a liar and his cousins. We are here praying and fasting and believing God for a spouse and your tail is sitting up in the house with a spouse and you ain't going to bed with him. I wish a ninja would. <laughs> I know I'm rolling tough tonight. I wish a ninja would. Mm -mm. Listen, if she try to sleep on the couch, listen, Miss Dorothy, Miss Veronica, if she try to sleep on the couch, well, I'm sleeping on the couch then. I'm sleeping on the couch. Honey, we, we can't both fit. We, we both going to fit on this couch. I paid a grip for this couch. We both going to sleep on this couch tonight. You on the couch? I'm on the couch. Well, I'm going to get up and go to bed. Well, I'm going to bed too. Well, I'm going to go sleep in the spare room. Well, I'm going to go sleep in the spare room time. Well, that bear ain't big enough for both. It's going to be big enough for us tonight. Where you go, I go. Where you lay, I lay. <laughs> Sandra Fabiola, listen, we both going to be on the couch tonight. Okay? Where you go, I go. Well, I'm going to just lay on the floor here. Well, I'm going to lay on the floor too. Praise God. I'm going to put a pallet on the floor. And I'm sleeping on the floor too. Now, we're going we gonna to kiss and hug and forgive each other. Before we go to bed, before we close our eyes, because we may not know, Miss Laronia, we don't know if God going to cause us to wake up in the morning. Do you know, family of God? Listen, let me help you all understand something. Today is Thursday, May 13th. Do you know that there are people who have plans for Thursday, May 13th, 2021? They did not live to see it. I have a cousin who's 38 years young and she's gone home to meet the Lord, left behind a great husband and left behind three children, 38 years young. She's gone. She was a best-selling author. She was a woman of God. She was an educator, 38 years young. She's gone. Don't you know that she had plans? She had plans to see all three of her children graduate from elementary school and middle school and high school. She's gone. She will never see their graduations. So for all y'all that think somehow that you are invincible, baby, let me help you with the word. The word of God, the word of God says, what is your life? It is nothing more than a vapor that's here for a moment and then it passes away. Just two years ago, I was in LA out in Marina Del Rey working out there at my favorite place called Starbucks, my second office, ran into John Singleton, one of the most phenomenal movie directors in the world. Ran into John Singleton. He looked great. I could tell in his eyes he was tired. But, you know, when you work hard like John Singleton, you're going to be tired. Who knew? Just last year, John Singleton passed away. 51 years young. 51 John Singleton is gone. Don't you know that man had dreams, visions, and other movies locked inside of him? He's gone. Hello? Thank you, Sandra. So listen, so I'm sharing all this with you, family, 
uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, me too, Amy. Listen, and by the way, for all of you, uh, if you ever want to be a blessing to me, Dr. G, if you ever want to be a blessing to me, okay, y'all can just send me a Starbucks card, okay? If you ever want to be a blessing to me, you can just send me a Starbucks card. That will bless my sanctified socks off, all right? Um, yes, come on. Come on, Dr. Clara. Life is short, so we've got to embrace every moment. So listen, what you must not do, ladies and gentlemen, is get yourself in a situation. Listen, you got to master this in your singleness, so that when you transition into marriage life, you already have a habit. You already have a customary way of how you conduct yourself, which is I'm not going to waste life. I'm not going to waste time. I'm not about to sit here and be angry and hold on to hostility when this is the man that I prayed for. This is the woman that I prayed for. And now God bless me with him. And I'm going to sit up here and have an attitude. Lucifer is a liar. <laughs> Come on, Miss Dorothy. Life is too short to be sitting up here acting foolish. All right. All right. So you have to be healed of the soul wounds because when we carry soul wounds, family, and you all please make sure you hit the share button. Let's get some folks in here, y'all. Uh, when you are not healed of the soul wounds, this causes you to keep having that short temper, that quick fuse. Nobody can hardly say nothing to you before you are blowing all the way up. You are going from zero to 100. Forget 60. We've been bypass 60. We go from zero to 100 and you're blowing up, cussing folk out or on the verge of cussing folk out, raising your voice and become violently hostile. Listen, that is not conducive to having a healthy, productive relationship. And some of y'all got temper tantrums that you have not been healed from. And this is indicative of the soul wound that you're suffering from, which is has which prior uh, which up until now has sabotaged many of your relationships. You are a good woman, but you got a bad temper, boo boo. You quick to tell folk off. And the Bible says, honey, let me help you. First Peter chapter three, the Bible says a woman with a meek and quiet spirit is of great price to God. All right. Come on. Travel with me to the scripture. First Peter chapter three. Let's read that tonight. And brothers, I ain't off of y'all yet either. I'm coming back to you. I'm still going to pull up on y'all brothers because us men folk, we have to be leaders. We don't get to just kick back and think just because women outnumber us and we can quote unquote have our pick of women that we wanna pursue, yeah, that's true. But guess what brothers? God holds us responsible. Um, did I say first Peter chapter two? F chapter three, I think I want second Peter chapter three. Let me see. Um, 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 brothers, we have a responsibility from the Lord that we have to have, uh, we have to walk circumspectly, which means that we carry ourselves in a very wise and a very prudent fashion. It means that we are disciplined in our desires. Listen, brothers, every healthy man wants to have sex. And because God made us visual creatures, ain't nothing wrong with looking at a woman sexually. You just must not lust after her where it causes you to approach her in a wrong way or that it causes you to start entertaining thoughts that are not healthy. It ain't good for you to be sitting up entertaining thoughts on how many ways you want to make uh, uh, have sex with this woman. I can't say make love because you don't love her yet. You don't even know her. So you ain't thought about making love to her. You're just talking about having sex with her. And sex is the easiest aspect of a relationship. Oh, you ain't even got to know a person's name to have sex with them. But if you really want to know them, know them from the Greek word perspective, the Greek word gnosko, which means to know experientially. All right. If you want to have an experiential relationship with someone, this requires us to get more into the mind, more into the soul, more into the heart, connect with them in the spirit. Because the sex part, that'll take care of itself. All right. Sex is the easiest part of the relationship. Um, I said, first Peter chapter three. Is that what I want? First Peter chapter three. Y'all forgive me. First Peter chapter three is what I want. Y'all first Peter chapter three. First Peter. Apostle Larry talking about first Peter chapter eight. Ain't no first Peter chapter eight. Apostle Larry. 
<laughs> what Bible are you reading? You reading the way? <laughs> you must be reading Jehovah's Witness Bible, Apostle Larry. <laughs> first Peter chapter 8. No, actually, first Peter chapter 18. <laughs> My sister Consuela said, yeah, Dr. G, I do have a bad temper. Hamburger. I need to be delivered. <laughs> All right, here we go. First Peter chapter three. Y'all don't ask me no questions yet. I'm teaching. Save your questions to the end. All right. I see your questions. I appreciate them. But y'all save your questions because I'm teaching right now. First Peter chapter number three. All right. Let's focus on. First, let's focus on verse number three. Uh, matter of fact, let's start at verse number one. First Peter chapter three, beginning at verse number one. The scripture says, um, and let me read this to you, family, from the New Lit Translation, the New Living Translation. And it says, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then, even if some uh, refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives as wives, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. How many of y'all, y'all throw up a five real quick if you saw the movie War Room? Throw up a five real quick if you saw the movie War Room. Throw up a five, throw up a five, throw up a five if you saw the movie War Room. Throw up a five real quick. Because in the movie War Room, it was a beautiful depiction on how a woman of God should conduct herself when she's got a knucklehead, stiff-necked, puffed-up husband who is selfish, Miss Consuela, selfish and all into himself and entertaining the idea of getting with other sisters. He was staring at another sister's booty in the church. Then he went out of town on a business trip and was about to hook up with another sister, took another sister to dinner. But oh my God, he had a praying wife. Watch this, Miss Latasha. He had a praying wife, Leslie Dove. And that woman, Christine, that woman prayed and she was in that war room on a nightly. Now see, it takes the impartation of a senior woman of God, one of the mothers of the church, who were true prayer intercessors, the mother imparted this wisdom to her because a lot of younger sisters, bless you, Cheryl, good to see you. Uh, a lot of younger sisters have never had the impartation of a senior woman. A lot of y'all, it's not like those senior women are not available. Y'all just be rejecting their knowledge. They rejecting their wisdom. Ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing. I know how to treat a man. I know how to conduct myself. Really? Really? Okay. The Bible says that the older women should teach the younger women, just like the older men must teach the younger men. I am blessed that I have awesome senior men of God that are in my life that I am accountable to. My apostle, he watched one of my broadcasts one night, called me up. Hey, that right there? Yeah, that's no, no. <laughs> okay, apostle, my God. <laughs> Listen, so let me bless you with this. So the scripture says that the husbands, even if they refuse to obey the good news of the gospel, your godly lives will cause them to be won over as they observe your purity, as they observe your reverence for God. All right. Watch this, family. Verse three, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great price. It is so precious to God. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and accepted the authority of their husbands. It's so interesting today, family of God, that a lot of women today, if you were to mention the word submit, oh my God, let me help y'all in here. If you were to mention the word submit, why submit? There's going to be one of two things that a women are, that a women are going to say in that room. 
Number one, the women are going to say, well, the Bible says that we're supposed to submit one to another. That's the first thing they're going to say. You, you share the scripture with them. They're going to come up with another scripture to contradict what you just said. Right. Number one. Number two, women are going to be like, <laughs> submit to who? 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 All of a sudden she becomes an owl. Who? 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 Me? Submit to who? <laughs> now you prayed and asked God for a husband, but now you don't want to submit to his leadership. That's a problem. All right. So let's back it up. So does the scripture indeed, uh, I'm, I'm getting way off topic, y'all. Man, hamburger. Uh, uh, y'all forgive me. I, I'm getting way off topic. Let me not get that. Let me get not to. Let me stay on the topic. Let me stay on topic. All right. Let me stay on point here. All right. So here's the thing. Women, if you're going to be a wife, you're not required to sit to submit to every man, but you are required to submit to the authority of your husband. And why marry a man if you don't trust the God in him? Why marry a man if you're not going to trust his authority? Because the man's job, his role that God has given him to serve you as a husband is to be your covering. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter five that the head of every wife is her husband and the head of every husband is the Lord. So if you're not going to trust the God in him, why be married to him? All right. And y'all let go of this 21st century new age movement mindset where you talk about, oh, well, we're supposed to be equal partners. Boo. There is partnership in marriage. Absolutely. And a wise man who loves you, he's going to consult with you. He ain't going to be just out there willy nilly making decisions. Not a wise man, because a wise man knows that in order for me to make my best decisions, I'm going to consult with my wife. And then after I've gone to God, I'm going to go make a decision. Come on, somebody. But now watch this. At the end of the day, ladies, there can't be two heads of anything. A two headed anything is a monster. There can't be two heads in a household. There can only be one headship. And the headship of the household is the husband, not you. I don't care if you do make more money than him, boo. You married him and you knew you made more cheddar than him. But just because you made, just because you make the most cheddar don't mean that you make all the, the decisions of the household and you're leading. No, boo. You sit your wonderful, anointed, money-making self down somewhere and you let your husband lead, sugar, sugar. Or else you should have kept your tail single. Yeah, I said it. Love you, mean it. Pushing your man out the door because you're emasculating him because you want to run things. I don't care if you do make the most money, honey. Sit your tail down somewhere and let your husband lead. And when you submit to your husband's authority, you're going to see a man stand up and you're going to see a man start showering you with his love because how we feel loved is how you show your respect for us. I don't care if you cook for him. I don't care if you wash his dirty drawers and give him some great sex. A man will not feel loved when he's not respected. If you don't respect his authority, if you don't respect his leadership, he's not going to feel loved. He's going to feel stripped of his manhood. He's going to feel emasculated. And when you emasculate a man, you essentially are pushing him away. And if you keep pushing him away, you will push him into the arms of another woman. Love you, mean it. Now, brothers, I'm about to pull up back on y'all. Skirt! Because I'm an equal opportunity preacher. So I'm about to pull up back on y'all, brothers. Here we go. Verse 7 of 1 Peter chapter 3. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are. She may be the weaker vessel, but she is your equal partner in God's gift. I know y'all women like that because I'm reading the word. She is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should which means you love her unconditionally. You wash her with the water of the word. And when you do so, man of God, when you treat her as you should, your prayers will not be hindered. 
Oh my God. Brothers, I'm about to give y'all a revelatory love nugget. Do you know, brothers, if you do not love your wife, if you do not honor her, if you don't treat her with, cherish her and treat her well, brothers, do you know that God will literally turn a deaf ear to your prayers? You can be praying. You can even be fasting. And if you ain't treating your wife right, if you talking to her in a condescending way, if you are mistreating her, verbally abusing her or worse, which no real man does. But if you're doing that, brothers, God will turn a deaf ear. Heaven will literally be shut up where your prayers will not go past that ceiling, bro, bro. Let me help you in here tonight. Your prayers will literally hit the ceiling and bounce back right at you. The angels will all be posted up, leaning against the wall like this. Yeah, man, we was on our way to go bless Apostle Larry. We was on our way to go bless James. We was on our way to go bless Rick. We was on our way to go bless Brother Ray. But Ray is mistreating his wife. So, you know, God just got us on pause. We ain't go down there and do nothing for that, brother. Hey, man, let's go over here and go over on the other side of heaven to get some ribs or something. <laughs> Listen, heaven will be on lockdown. Heaven will be on lockdown. God will not respond to your prayers if you mistreat your wife, bruh, bruh. So this is why for us as men, God requires us. And this is true for all of us, but especially true for us as men. We got to die. God in heaven, help me teach this thing tonight. We've got to die in order to properly be prepared to have a life with a beautiful wife. What do I mean by die? Oh my God, Dr. G, my Atlanta, Dr. G, do you mean I actually have to die a physical death? No, sir, not die a physical death, but you do have to die to selfishness. You do have to die to your selfish ambitions, which causes you to be so ensconced in your work, in your ministry, in your inventions, in your, in your artistry, that you're so ensconced in that, that you're putting her second. Listen, I cannot tell you how many women that I've counseled with over 18 years. I cannot tell you how many women I've counseled which says, I'm nothing but his girlfriend. I'm nothing but his side piece. His artistry is his wife. That school is his wife. His career is his wife. That church is his wife. And I ain't nothing but the side chick. I cannot tell you how many women have told me that. And brothers, guess what you're doing? You're pushing her away. And you keep on pushing her away. And you could be responsible for pushing her into the arms of another man. Hello, how you doing? Take a sip of my juice without the gin. Let me help you in here tonight. I know this is rough tonight, y'all. This is rough, ain't it? I said I was going to give you five keys tonight, family. I think I'm going to just give y'all two because y'all can't handle too much more. I don't want to overfeed you. So we're going to come back with part two of this message tomorrow. How about that? I'm going to give you one more love nugget, and then we're going to have a Q&A. You guys can ask me some questions. Samandria, I saw you had posted a great question earlier, so come back with that question, please, if you will. You all know what to do. If you ask questions, if you make comments, if I miss it, you have to make sure you copy it before you send it. That way you can repaste it into the comments so that I don't have to scroll through hundreds of comments. You can repaste it so I can see it and I can honor you by addressing your question. So, Mandra, you asked a great question earlier, but unfortunately I was teaching and I, I needed to stay in my flow. All right. Uh, so I'm going to drop one more love nugget on y'all and then we're going to go ahead. And uh, Christine said, uh, pour it on, Dr. G. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to overfeed y'all. And plus, I got to come back on at midnight to pray. So we're going to cut it short tonight, y'all. Uh, but I know I've given some good teaching already. All right. Uh, so I'm going to drop one more love nugget on you talking about how to prepare, how to be prepared for love readiness. How do you know that your heart is ready to love again, especially for those of us who have been married or you've been in a long term relationship where things didn't quite work out as you have planned? You were really looking forward to marriage, but it didn't work out. Um, or you went through a relationship and you suffered betrayal in that relationship. Uh, Ms. Rochelle said, give us more nuggets. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you one more, and then we're going to do part two of this teaching. We're going to do part two tomorrow night. All right. 
All right, here we go. So how do you determine if you are ready to love again? All right. So we talked about number one, being healed of all soul wounds. All right. And then number two, bless you, Miss Shirley. Uh, so number two, how do I make sure that I'm ready to love again? First of all, it is having, um, let me just make it simple. Let me, let me keep it real simple. After you make sure that your heart is healed of all soul wounds, the second love nugget I want to give you in determining your ability to love again is you must be willing to be vulnerable. You must be willing to be vulnerable. A lot of us say that we're ready for love, but you ain't trying to open up your heart to nobody. Nobody. You got all the questions, but you don't want to give any answers. You don't want to provide any information about you, but you want to be a doggone interrogator to somebody else. You know what I mean? You asking all the questions, putting a light on their face. So where were you on the night of the fifth? You know, <laughs> you know, you got all the questions. You got all the insight. You got all your little discernment. But you're not open. You're not making yourself vulnerable to anyone. Listen, and we don't make ourselves vulnerable, Arlene, in the first date or even the first couple of weeks. Vulnerability is given over time. Now, let me remind you all the process of developing a healthy love relationship. All right. Here we go. Stage number one. Everybody write this. Somebody write this down. Not everybody, because most of you already know this because I've been teaching it for years. Somebody write this down real quick. Dating is for discovery. Dating is for discovery. Dating is for discovery. We ain't shacking. We ain't sexing. We ain't doing nothing in the dating process. All right. Dating is simply to discover if we are a good fit for each other. Dating is to for us to discover whether or not we share COP, compatibility of purpose. All right. So we know we kind of like each other because we're attracted to each other, but then we're going to go out on a couple of dates to find out if we have the potential to be mates. All right. And no amount of talking over the phone or even video chat is going to tell us that we got to spend time together. All right. If you live on the other side, if you live, what if he lives in a different country, Dr. G? Well, Dr. G, what if she lives in a different country? Y'all better find time to get together. All right. You have to spend time together. I don't care if y'all video chat and y'all go to sleep with each other each night, just staring at each other. So what you doing? I'm just staring at you, just talking to you. I don't care if y'all video chatting every night. You are not going to really know each other until you spend time together. All right. Again, the word no in the Greek is gnosko, which means to know by way of experiential relationship. All right. And actually, a deeper definition of the word gnosko means to know by way of intercourse, not sexual intercourse. Y'all hot folks. Ooh, Dr. G said we can have intercourse. That's the only way I'm going to know somebody. I got to take off all my clothes. And No, the devil is a liar. No, keep your clothes on, sugar, sugar. <laughs> I'm not talking about sexual intercourse. Intercourse means through intimate connection, having intimacy. Knowing each other on the inside, not just stimulating each other on the outside. Hello, y'all hot folks. <laughs> Can't even hardly hold nobody's hand. And you, ooh, mother getting hot. It's been a long time, honey. I'm, a, I'm about to turn up. <laughs> Nobody can even hold your hand and you about to turn up? Hamburger. <laughs> No wonder God can't trust you with no man yet, honey. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm about to have a Nelly moment. It's getting hot in her. I'm about to take off all my clothes. <laughs> Keep your clothes on, hunty, hunty. Okay. All right. I got your question, Samandria. I'll bring that back in a minute. All right. So here we go. <laughs> but you must, as you move through the dating process, the second phase of a proper healthy relationship is 
courting, all right? At the courtship level of a relationship, I know that's an old school term that the millennials don't use, but those of us of the X generation, we're familiar with it. Generation X and the baby boomer generation, we know what that is, right? Courting is about exclusivity. Courting, Samandria, Evangelist Lisa, bless you, dear. Good to see you. Courting is where we become exclusive with each other. We ain't checking for nobody else. You ain't letting nobody roll up in your DMs because you know it goes down in the DMs. We ain't letting nobody roll up in the DMs. We ain't letting nobody send us pictures and all that stuff. We ain't having all of these intimate conversations at night with folk. We ain't doing none of that with no one else because we are courting now. We are committed to each other exclusively. At this level, Apostle Larry, where we become exclusive to one another, this is now where we begin to prayerfully move that relationship toward marriage. All right. Here we go. Now, at this level, Miss Rochelle, when we begin to prayerfully move the relationship toward marriage, we're exclusively committed to each other. All right. My brother Willie J is in the building. Bless you, Willie J. So now I'm praying to see if you're the one. You should be praying to see if I'm the one. All right. At this level, now we're talking about moving forward now, and now we move forward to the three to six month mark. All right. Now, let me introduce a piece that's really, really, really important. We're talking about being prepared to love again at somewhere around the three to six month mark. If we've been intentional about developing our relationship, we've been prayerful regarding our relationship. If children are in the mix, this is where we begin to introduce each other to children. Oh, no, Dr. G, I'm not introducing nobody to my child until I know we're about to get married. Baby, that's going to be too late and you're going to mess some stuff up. Let me help you as a pastoral counselor of 18 years. OK, we want to make the introduction sooner than later. Somebody drop this in the chat, Pastor LaDonna Marie. Say introduce children sooner than later sooner than later. Why, Dr. G? Because if, again, you've been working on the relationship, if, again, you've been prayerful regarding the relationship, if, again, you've been intentional with how you're developing the relationship, we want to introduce children sooner than later. Why? Because if we're going to be a blended family, you don't want to spring some person onto your children. You want them to feel just as comfortable and just as safe with this person as you do. Now, you don't have to bring him over to the house, ladies. We go out to the park, all right? Now, if you live in a different state, okay, you do a Zoom, you do a virtual uh, call, a video chat, and you have your child sitting with you as you introduce that person and let that man talk to your son. Let that man talk to your daughter. Brothers, if you have a woman, then you let your daughter or your son talk to that woman. Why? Because we're being intentional about a relationship. Now, guess what? Through the video chat or if you live in the same area and you guys can meet up, you go out to the park together, go to Chuck E. Cheese. There are a plethora of things to do instead of just coming to the house. You don't want to come to the house, not for the first meeting, not for the first introduction. You want to be out. You want to be in a fun environment. If both of you have children, let's go to McDonald's Playland and let the kids come together and play together. OK, I've counseled with couples where both of them had children and they didn't introduce each other until like a month or two before the marriage. And the marriage was a mess because the children were unfamiliar with each other. They didn't like each other. And of course, each parent is going to side with their own children, right? Because it, most parents think that their kids are the best. And it became a mess because your children ain't the best, hunty, hunty. Let me help you in here tonight. <laughs> you know your kid be slapping people on the side. Your kid done got sent home four times. So, of course, this kid is subject to be hitting people in the house. If they hitting people in class at school, <laughs> my kid would never do that. Your kid got sent home four times. What are you talking about? Your kid is in elementary school, nine years old, and already been suspended three times. Hey, hamburger. <laughs> when I was coming up as a kid, Jewel, Pastor Ladonna, listen, I never, I never, it never even occurred to me in elementary school, like getting suspended. Like, what's that? Now kids get suspended on a regular basis, doing all kind of damnable stuff. <laughs> I got suspended one time in junior high school, and that was because a kid started a fight with me, and I had to fight back. 
And the principal didn't even want to suspend me because I was an honor student. So the principal didn't even want to suspend me. But she had to suspend me because I had no business fighting. But he hit me and I was like, yo, I can't be no punk. So, hey, we got to get him up. But other than that, never even suspended. What? So you want to make those introductions sooner than later. All right. All right. Let's go, y'all. I'm going to come back for part two tomorrow night and give you this. But let's go to Samandra's question because Samandra asked a great question. And I want to pull that and I'll take a total of three questions. I'm going to take Samandra's question. If you all have any questions, drop a couple of questions in. I'll take two more questions. In addition to Samandra's question, I'll take two more questions. All right. So here we go. Here's Miss Samandria's question. Her question is, <clears throat> how do you identify soul wounds in a potential mate when the initial discovery phase at the beginning is great? Dude's presentation can be promising. OK, very good. Very good. Uh, that's true about y'all, too. because Y'all be bringing y'all representative to the table, too. I don't know why. Anytime we're talking about representatives, it's always like the men bring representatives, but the women always come with the real. No, y'all don't. Y'all be bringing some representatives for real, for real. Ambassadors. <laughs> Both inwardly and outwardly. All right. I mean, don't, don't let me start talking about y'all lashes. Be having a whole tarantula on your eye. Talk about how you doing, baby? Like, oh, my God. Can I? Where are your eyes at? Oh, my God. Lift up those tarantulas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Somebody going to send me an email. Dr. G, I can't believe you were talking about my lashes. I got them silk. I got the mink lashes. I got the mink ones. They, they cost $300. Hamburger, honey. Put that $300 in a savings plan. <laughs> Hamburger. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I digressed. Uh, Samandria says, how do you identify soul wounds <laughs> in a potential mate? When the initial discovery phase of the beginning is great, dude's presentation can be promising. Absolutely, Samandria, you are absolutely right. And so my response to that is, uh, first and foremost, to thine own self be true, as Shakespeare said, right? So when I'm healed of my soul wounds, guess what? It heightens my discernment so that I can identify soul wounds in somebody else, all right? So how you can identify a soul wound is people who are suffering from fear, uh, be it fear of betrayal, uh, fear of rejection, that stuff will come out, all right? A person can put up a great facade as long as they want to, but ultimately, if a person is suffering from a soul wound, that thing will come out. What you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, because this is for all of us, all right? What you have to do is keep having conversations, Keep having conversations. All right. Just keep talking. And that's why I said, ladies and gentlemen, that once you've had a few conversations and you built up a good rapport, then you have to go out and you have to spend time together because Samandria, that's how you will really be able to see if this person has suffered from soul wounds or if they're willing to be vulnerable. OK. And let you know the soul wounds that they're suffering from. And let me introduce a thought tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that many of us have not even considered ever. You know what really brings complete healing and restoration in a relationship between a man and a woman? Love. The reality is all of us have been through some level of trauma. All of us have suffered through disappointment. All of us have struggled with fear in one way or another. But love is the healing agent that God pours into us and through us to touch the life of someone else. And so when we come together, ladies and gentlemen, as husband and wife, or even in the courtship phase, when we become exclusive with each other, guess what? That helps with the process of healing for all y'all who waiting on a perfect person who you don't want to deal with nobody who got baggage. Boo, let me help you. You got baggage. I don't care how wonderful you are. I've seen your Instagram page. You look good on the outside, 
but you are a hot mess, hunty, hunty, on the inside. I see you, bruh, bruh. I see you in the gym trying to be the ebony man male model of the year. I see you. I see you. I see you. Boom. You got them. Boom. You pressing. Bitch pressing 350, 400. I see you. You look good, bruh, bruh. Y'all cut up, bicep, tricep, bye bye, pecs, bam. But you a hot mess, bro. You broken. You don't tell nobody that you be crying late at night because of fear of rejection, because of the hurt that you went through in your childhood. Dad not there, mom not there, or both your parents passed away at a young age. Or that you had both of your parents, but you didn't get that love, that nurturing, that affirmation that all of us as men need. All of us as men need. And any man that says they don't need it is a man who is a liar to himself and a liar to others. All of us men need affirmation. Some of the mightiest warriors that you've ever seen on the planet, be they athletic warriors, military warriors, shout out to all our military men and women who are protecting us and keeping our freedom here in America. We salute you. Military men and women, we appreciate you greatly. You are not honored enough, but we celebrate you tonight. In Jesus name, pray for your protection as you're protecting us. Every man needs affirmation. In fact, for most of us men, especially those of us who are in leadership, our number one or our number two love language is words of affirmation. But bro, you didn't get that. And so as a result, you're hurting. And so more the more time we spend with each other, the more that we'll see those things, Samandria and family, and the more you'll have an opportunity to help your partner heal, all right? That's what love does. Love is the healing agent, all right? So I hope that blesses you. Hope that makes some sense. All right, and let me take a pause for the late night love calls. Let me take a pause real quick um, because I've gotten a few inbox messages over the last couple of days. And um, um, a couple of you have reached out for um, coaching. Um, um, I want to, uh, first and foremost, um, if you want relationship coaching or if you say, well, Dr. G, I just need some mentorship through this season because I'm kind of dealing with some issues that I know I need to resolve. Ladies, let me tell you, the best thing that you can do for yourself in preparation for a husband or just to get better as a woman and you want to see yourself through a different set of lens. Ladies, one of the best things you can invest and in, best investment you could ever make is get some coaching. All right. I am here to serve you. And if you want, please just go ahead and send me an inbox message or you can send me an email. And my email address is right here. Real Love Nation at gmail.com. That's real love nation at gmail.com. Send me an email. Just send me a brief description of what your situation is. And I will be honored to give you some coaching. I'll be honored to serve you. Okay. My client base is consists of celebrities, ministry leaders, political officials, even a couple of law enforcement officers. I have two uh, police officers, highly uh, decorated police officers, a husband and a wife team. Um, they're both police officers that are my clients and they've been with me for years. Um, so I would love to be of service to you however I can to help you heal or just get your mind in a better place of preparation for a relationship or preparation to love again for a marriage. All right. So send me an email, reallovenation at gmail.com, reallovenation at gmail, and I'll be glad to be of service to you. All right. I'm going to take two more questions, y'all, and then I'm going to get off of here. All right. Is Samandria the only person that got questions? Samandria, you always ask great questions, by the way. And thank you. Thank you so much, Samandria. I appreciate it. Um, okay, let's see. Christine has a great question. Christine. Christine says, G, um, if you're a uh, question, if you're talking with a man, should uh, should he just ghost you if he's not interested or should he be honest and transparent and to tell you that he's not interested? Great question, Samandria. I mean, excuse me, uh, Christine, Christine, uh, and I'm going to get to Samandria's next question. Christine Foster, this is a great question. I find this uh, to be experienced on both sides. 
women ghosting men and men ghosting women. It's so funny that women never talk about how women ghost dudes. Y'all the one that started the ghosting. <laughs> but to answer your question, Christine, um, yes, a man should be transparent, should be honest and say, hey, you know, I just want to keep this relationship on a friendship level. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that is the proper way to handle that. That is the proper way to handle that. So, yes, indeed, um, Christine and ladies, the same thing is true for you. If you dated a man, you've gone out a couple of times, but you know you're really not feeling him. Just be honest with him and say, hey, I really like you as a friend. And he said, oh, why? You know, how come I can't get a chance? I really like you as a friend. And ladies and gentlemen, if we decide that we don't want to move forward with that person, make sure that you affirm them. Don't tear them down and tell them the 18 things you don't like about them. Well, first of all, I don't like your hair. Second of all, I don't like the fact that you ain't got no teeth in your head. Thirdly, your breath stank. Fourthly, your feet too big or too small. Second, you know, I mean, you know, come on, let's not go there. Well, you, you lady brothers, you telling the ladies, you know, first of all, okay, you bow legged, you know, I was kind of cool, but like hamburger, I don't know. You know, I mean, <laughs> no, please. If you decide you don't want to pursue a relationship with that person, make sure you affirm them. Don't tear them down and tell them all the reasons why they you don't like them. Make sure you say something positive and they keep pressing the issue. Look, I'm sorry. I really want to be nice. OK, so I need you to respect my decision. And I'm telling you that I think you're a nice person, but I just want to keep our relationship on a friendship basis. And that's it. You don't owe them any further explanation. You don't. I don't care, ladies, if he's taking you out to five dinners. All right. You don't owe them any further explanation. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's go to Samandria's next question. Uh, Ms. Samandria said, um, you mentioned introducing kids. What if your potential mate has a different parenting style. Some parents don't believe in discipline. Kids are used to being disrespectful. All right. Great question. Once again, this is why we introduce. We make the introduction sooner than later, because if there's a vastly different parenting style, OK, one that we cannot compromise on, then we already know this is a potential problem. So we must not push push past this issue. All right. We must not push past this issue. There was a woman that I dated years ago. She absolutely doesn't believe in spanking at all. Okay. I am not of that school. I am of the old school. The Bible says, spare not the rod. If you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. I don't believe in beating the child beyond the inch of his life. I don't believe in busting the kid's head down to the white meat, even though sometimes they may deserve it. I don't mean I don't believe in doing any of those things, but I do not believe in putting a child in time out. I do not believe in just sending a child to the room and let them think about it for a while. No. All right. And I believe the earlier you instill these disciplinary actions, the less you will have to do it. All right. But you have to exercise discipline and every parent who did not exercise any discipline. Let me tell you, I, for three, maybe four years, I did prison ministry every second or every third Saturday where we went to a youth uh, maximum detention center, all right, for kids 18 and under. It was like kids in there, 14, 16, 18 years old. And uh, guess what? These kids, many of them came from great parent, uh, great two-parent homes. And many of them said, my parents never spanked me. They never disciplined me. I got to do whatever I want. So I stole a motorcycle. But bruh, you told me your parent bought you a motorcycle for Christmas. Yeah, but I didn't like that motorcycle. I wanted a different one. So I stole somebody else's. Wow. A lack of discipline leads to a child becoming rebellious. All right. All right. Let's see. Let me take Willie J's question. Uh, Dr. G, and you really think they are going to be happy with that answer? Most people want to know why and keep pressing you for an answer. Yeah, this is true, Willie J. But in the end, we don't owe anybody an explanation as to why. 
if they keep pressing, you just have to kindly like release yourself off the phone, release yourself from that conversation with the person. Because some people will press. I know I've experienced it too. But listen, we be as kind as we can, be straightforward and honest and listen. And that's it. If they keep pressing the issue, that's on them. Okay, that's on them. All right, fam, I'll take one more question tonight and then I'm going to be done. I've been here an hour and almost 15 minutes. Uh, so, but I'll take one more question. I'll take one more question. I don't know if I missed any questions, um, but you all know the deal. You know the drill. If you have a question, make sure you always copy it so that you can resend it. Most of y'all have questions and comments and you've never gone live and you don't even know what it's like to be right here and literally look through hundreds and hundreds. Y'all go back and look at my broadcast. I usually have anywhere from 700 to 1100 comments. And if you think that's easy, yeah, you sit here and try to look at and respond to uh, 700 to 1100 comments. It's a lot. This looks easy, but it ain't easy. All right. So I need you all to be loving, kind and patient. And again, if you post a question, make sure you copy it. That way, if I miss it, boom, you can miss, bam, paste it and resend it so I can catch it. All right. Because I want to I want to take everyone's question as much as I possibly can. All right. Let's see. Let me see. Let me scroll. Let me scroll. Let me scroll. Because y'all be trying to make a brother work hard. Y'all should be working hard. I'm already working. I'm up here teaching for a whole hour. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Samandria. Um, if you break it off with someone or you decide that you don't want to move forward in a relationship, y'all, please don't send that information by text. Call them. All right. Don't just send a text message and say, you know, I don't want to see you no more. Bye. And matter of fact, I'm putting you on block. <laughs> don't do that, family. Come on. Let's be mature. Let's be kind. Let's love each other the way we would want to be loved. Let's treat each other the way we would want to be treated. All right. That's the proper way to do things. And it only takes about 60 seconds. It don't it don't take a long time. It only takes about 60 seconds. All right. So I will take one more question, y'all. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Would you say Willie J. Arlene has a question? OK, Arlene, send your question. Or resend your question. I'll take Miss Arlene's question. I'll take Miss Arlene's question, the last one. Um, Leslie Dove, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand your question. Um, you're saying, is it wrong for married couples to be verbally expressive during that adult time? I'm not sure I understand your question, Miss Leslie Dove. You'll have to break that down a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. All right, Miss Arlene, I'm waiting on your question, dear. Waiting on your question. Okay, here we go, Miss Arlene. Um, bum, bum, bum. What's the difference between compatibility and suitability? Which one is biblically suggested regarding marriage? That's a great question, Arlene. Great question. Thank you. Um, so compatibility and suitability is, is synonymous, um, but suitability is a bit different. Um, suitability, um, think about the root word suit which is something that has been tailor made to fit, right? So I love in the scripture in the book of Genesis where the scripture says that God has created Eve to be a suitable companion. So that means that she was tailor made to fit Adam and literally 
tailor made to fit him to help him fulfill purpose and to fulfill destiny. All right. She was tailor made by God to fit Adam and not fit anybody else. All right. And so suitability is synonymous with compatibility, but it's a little bit different. Tailor made to fit. Compatibility is really about the two people, a man and a woman coming together and determining, number one, do we have shared same core values? Um, number two, because we can both be saved. We can be born again, love God, but we can have different core values. All right. If we're two single people who are both unmarried without children, you may want to raise a family. I might not want to raise a family. I want to be married, but I don't want to have children. Right. So we got to find out. Do we have same uh, 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 shared? Excuse me. Do we have shared core values? All right. Do we think of money management in the same way? The number one cause of divorce is a lack of money or disagreement regarding the management of money. All right. That's the number one cause of divorce in North America. So do we have same, uh, excuse me, do we have shared core values regarding money management, money investment, right? And so um, to answer your question a little bit further, uh, Miss Arlene, when we talk about compatibility, um, the way we determine if we are suitable companions for each other is you go through the process of what I call COP, compatibility of purpose. I have to make sure that your purpose is a complement to mine. And I have to also make sure that my purpose is a complement to yours. And I use this funny analogy all the time, but it really is a true thing that happened. And that is that if we're both called to ministry, Arlene, but you're called to be a missionary, so you're going to be spending three months at a time in another country, Costa Rica here, Dubai there, Zambia there. If you're called to be a missionary, well, then our purposes are not compatible because while it is a part of my purpose apostolically to travel the nations, I'm not called to mission field. So I can't be married to a woman who's going to be three months at a time or even a month a month at a time in another country somewhere because I'm not going to get married to a woman and still feel like I'm single because most often she's on the road. So here we are, two people who love God. We're both in the kingdom, but our purposes don't complement each other. Our purposes are at conflict with one another. And so if there isn't compatibility of purpose, then that makes me not a suitable companion for you and you are not a suitable companion for me. All right. So I hope that answers your question. Um, hope that makes sense, Miss Arlene. And thank you for asking that question. It's a great question. Great question. All right. <sighs> All right. Leslie Dove is the last question I'm going to take. Leslie Dove says, married couples that are physically together, expressing verbally how they are feeling during the making love process. Some words are very strong. Um, that's a great question too, Leslie Dove. Listen, those are conversations that we have while we're courting, okay? Not the dating process. Well, maybe during the dating process, but just make sure that you ask the right question at the appropriate time, all right? We can't be having sex conversations while we having, you know, we kicking it in the dark, you know, Netflixing and chilling. But we start having those kind of conversations and that's going to spark something. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's be all the way grown in here and keep it real tonight. All right. So um, but especially once we come into the courting phase of the relationship and we're committed, we're exclusive to each other. Yeah. We got to have those conversations up front. What is comfortable for you and what is uncomfortable for you? All right. Now, some people, um, hmm, when they get really excited and uh, let's see, Willie J, uh, they are moving into a, uh, I think I'm gonna have to get Bishop Noel Jones on y'all to really break this down. Let me, let me, let me bring out my Bishop Noel Jones. Where's my, where's my Bishop Noel Jones glasses? Um, I can't, I can't find my teacher glasses. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here's my teacher glasses, my, my professor glasses. Um, so when a man and a woman are come together uh, and they are ascending to a climatic state uh, and beginning to have uh, an orgasmic experience, 
one must be careful uh, that we are having compatibility of what is appropriate in the bedroom and uh, if expletives can be used or not used. Uh, I wish I could teach this like I feel it. Uh, so you have to determine if we are going to to talk about expletives and we're using profane language in order to stimulate uh, the heightened sense of awareness during the climatic experience or if we are going to uh, if we're going to uh, just be raw and keep it real with each other or if we're going to have a more Christian version of the language that we will express Amen May the Lord have a blessing to the teaching. <laughs> uh, so, in other words, let me give it to you like this. Some of y'all like to cuss when you get to a certain peak in the lovemaking experience. So, if an, that's I F apostrophe N, if an, you cuss, you have to determine whether or not that's appropriate if you have children that can hear you in the room next door. Because if and you have children, you probably either want to learn to eat the pillow, okay? <laughs> or you're going to have to learn how to, uh, you know, insert some more age appropriate words, seeing that ages next door may be listening to the lovemaking experience between the husband and the wife. <sighs> okay, there we go. All right, I hope that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, you might have to eat that pillow, you know. Cause you know, you come on, y'all. You know, if you start going there, you have to eat that pillow. <laughs> Just have to eat that pillow, boo. One of the reasons why it's on there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So listen, let me announce again, Diana, the Know Your Worth Singles Conference. See, this, we're going to get even deeper when we talk about sex. We're going to get even deeper during the Know Your Worth Singles Conference, Friday, August 27th, Saturday, August 28th in Newburgh, North Carolina. Listen, this is not going to be a virtual event, y'all. It's going to be a live event. I need everybody to register for the conference. I want to see y'all. I want to meet you. I'm bringing some books. I'm going to personally autograph each book that's purchased. Amen. Got to emphasize that. I thought that you were giving us some free books. No, boo. <laughs> they, they cost. Amen. Cost me to print them. It's going to cost you to read them. <laughs> listen. Uh, listen, Arlene, whatever you got to eat in order to be silent, silent, whatever you got to eat, get out for yours and show your right. <laughs> All right. Listen, so the Know Your Word Singles Conference is going down Thursday, excuse me, Friday, August 27th, Saturday, August 28th, New Bern, North Carolina. Listen, y'all get on there and register right now. Willie J, I want to see you, bro. Jewel, oh my God, my beautiful friend from Canada. Jewel, you need to come to the Know Your Worth Singles Conference. Come on, y'all. I'm going to be there. Listen, this ain't virtual. This is live, and it's going to be fun. We're going to have speed dating. We're going to have a love forum. We're going to have a sex therapist. We're going to have a money strategist teaching y'all single folks how to get your cheddar up because when you're making more cheddar, it makes every part of your life better. All right. So we're going to have some wonderful aspects of this singles conference. It's going to be off the chain, y'all. All right. You can bet your last Monty. It's going to be all the way live, hunty. All right. The Know Your Word Singles Conference hosted by my dear sister, Diana DeStefano. You don't want to miss it, y'all. Come on. I want to meet y'all. Some of y'all have been connected to you for years through here on Facebook and on Instagram and on Periscope. I would love to meet you in person. All right. 
August 27th and August 28th, New Bern, North Carolina. Come on, y'all. You can get your flight tickets now. Hamburger. If you fly, your, get your tickets now. Listen, you can get your tickets probably that it costs, you know, cheaper than it costs with a gallon of gas. Especially if y'all have a fine European vehicle and you're buying 92 gas, 91, 92 octane. Yes. Guarantee you. Hamburger. I'm glad I no longer have that BMW 7 Series because I had a big old black Black on black BMW 7 Series hamburger. Let me tell you, man, it costs $80 to fill that tank up. <laughs> LA gas ain't no joke. All right. So listen, y'all, I want to see you there. Y'all go ahead and hurry up and register. Come on, because listen, the price of the registration is going up in a couple weeks. So y'all better get up in there. Hurry up and go ahead and register. All right. All right, family. So I love you. Blessings on you. Uh, oh, my God. Veronica says $60 for her caddy hamburger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me that gas is no joke. Tell you for real, for real. All right, y'all. Listen, I love you. Blessings on you. Have a wonderful evening. We're going to come back with part two tomorrow night. Part two tomorrow night, we're going to come back with this awesome subject, five ways to prepare your heart to love again. Listen, let me know real quick. Y'all uh, give me some love real quick and let me know. Has this teaching been a blessing to you? Do you think it's been beneficial? Throw up a throw up a seven real quick and let me know if it's been beneficial to you. Throw up a seven real quick before we go. Throw up a seven real quick if teaching has been beneficial, if it's really been helpful, if you got a lot out of it or if you got a little bit out of it. Uh, throw up a seven real quick. Throw up a seven. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Um, because I really take time, family. I am not somebody who just comes on and start talking. I really take the time to prepare. Thank you, Pastor LaDonna. I really take the time to prepare before I go live and make sure that I'm adding value. Because if I'm not on here, listen, I've been on here, y'all, one hour, 30 minutes and 49, 50 seconds. Listen, if I'm not adding value to your lives and I've been on here with y'all talking for 90 minutes, hamburger, that's a waste of your time, waste of my time and a waste of God's time. All right. But I pray that is this has been um, added value for you. All right. Um, I hope this has really been helpful for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, family. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Veronica. I appreciate you all as well. Now, how many people, how many of you who are or who are here, some of you who have gone through some really traumatic experience or some relationship setbacks or have been betrayed and you say, dang, my heart has been closed for years, but I am ready to love again. I am ready to open up my heart and be ready to love again or be married, ready for marriage. All right. Um, how many of you who are in that place would say, you know what, Dr. G, I can use some coaching. I can use some help. Y'all throw up a five. If you feel like you can use some coaching, you can use some impartation. You can use having some group coaching or some one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right. Throw up a five real quick if you feel that that would be valuable for you. All right. Now, I put up my email address earlier. I know some of you will email me and some of you will be afraid to email me because you think that I won't respond. Listen, I will respond, but I want to see if this is a value to you because uh, and my assistant, Miss Hall, will probably get mad at me because she keeps my calendar and she'll say, Dr. G, your calendar is already full. But in this season of my life, I'm making some time, especially between now and August, because I've got certain things happening and um, I'm only traveling a couple of times where normally I'm traveling at least twice a month. I'm on a plane going somewhere uh, on the average of twice a month. But in this season, I'm not traveling as much. Uh, with the exception of Diana's conference and one other event. So I have more time. So if you would like to have some coaching, if you would like to have a group coaching session or one-on-one -on -one coaching, by all means, throw up a five. And I will make sure that I make myself available for you if this is something you feel that would be needed, if you feel like it could benefit you. All right. 
All right. Well, blessings on you all. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for your responses. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Blessings on you all. Thank you, Joy. Blessings to you. Um, again, my email address is right here on the screen, reallovenation at gmail.com. That's reallovenation at gmail.com. You're welcome to send me an email. Send me a brief description of what your situation is, and then I will give you a free absolutely free 30 minute consultation where we will assess what your situation is and again see if i am a suitable coach a suitable consultant for you all right i give you a free 30 minute session and that allows us to assess i i get to hear your heart and see what the situation is and then i'll let you know if i can be of service to you and i'll offer you a couple of solutions and if you think that's valuable then we move forward and we'll develop a coaching um uh, relationship. All right. So blessings on you. Love you to life. Um, thank you all once again for coming on and supporting. Um, I'm going to try to get back on at midnight. Um, I might need a little bit of time just to get get some downtime. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, but anyway, love you, family. Um, I'm going to try to come back on later on in about an hour or so for prayer. OK, love you. Blessings on you. We'll see you tomorrow. Y'all make sure you come back for the Late Night Love Chat. This is your brother, Gerald T. Hightower, signing off. Blessings, family.